versus Krzyzewski. Last time they met in the 1992 Final Four, a perceived snub by Knight against Coach Shea. Did not shake his hand at the end of the game, but he goes out of his way to give Coach K a little rub down before they meet tonight in the second round of the Great Alaska Shootout. Here's Knight's lineup. Brian Evans, the senior, his top player at forward. Krzyzewski will turn to the point guard. Jeff Capel had a very solid night last night in their win against Old Dominion. And his dad, the coach of Old Dominion, Jeff Capel, number two. I'm with Derek Dickey tonight. We're going to have a good one, Derek. The Blue Devils win the tip. Well, Bob Knight wants his team to come out and be a lot more consistent, a lot more aggressive than they were last night against the Alaska Anchorage Seawolves. Here's Ricky Price. They had a big second half last night. The missed rebound to Richard Mandeville. He makes the start tonight as Bob Knight is not going to start. Todd Lindemann. Lindemann will play off the bench at center. Lindemann did not play as aggressively as Coach Knight would have wanted him to last night. The only seven footer on the floor. Alaska Anchorage only had two players on their entire roster over six foot seven. Indiana only has three players under six foot seven on their roster. Meanwhile, Duke was very impressive in beating. Old Dominion. Greg Newton was particularly strong last night. Tony Moore saving to Price. Price with a three-point goal. And Duke takes the lead. Great hustle to keep that ball in bounds. Moore just acrobatically went after the ball, kept it alive. Get it back in bounds for Price to make that easy jump shot. And they are going to correctly change the ruling on the last shot. The one referee threw both hands in the air, but clearly Price was inside the line, and they're going to call it a two. So Duke leads by 2 nothing. Always good to see when officials get together and make a decision when they're not sure like that. Here's a foul on Tony Moore extending the defense on Andre Patterson. Patterson played well for Knight last night with 16 points to six of seven from the floor. Bob Knight has never had a losing year in Bloomington. 25 consecutive winners. Last year they went 19 and 12. Andre Patterson throws it away trying to get into Mandeville and he missed him by a good six inches. Duke has to intensify their defense last night against Old Dominion the second half. They turned it up another notch. They held Old Dominion in the second half to just 29 points in that game while they scored 44 and ODU only shot 35% from the field. Here's Jeff Capel. Good defense by Evans. He pokes it away. He's touched. Shot clock at 17 as he picks it up 75 feet away. He has plenty of time, Ricky Price. Jeff Capel against Wilkerson to Newton. Rebound pulled by Chris Collins. Good hustle. Good job. And that's the, the advantage Coach K gives to his team. He teaches his guys how to get after the ball and not only get after it, keep the possession, keep the ball in your hands. Every coach tries to stress that, but it's another thing to get your players to execute it. Jeff Capel, a three-point goal. Capel last night made a couple of three, scored a dozen points, had five assists. It was a very emotional night for him going up against his dad's team, but he played through it. He did, and, and he wasn't really nervous in the game. And you talk about the five steals. He had four rebounds and four steals in that game, but he didn't have any turnovers. That, to me, would have been a sign of nerves. Andre Patterson knocks Tony Moore completely off the floor, off the baseline, <laughs> and then throws it inside to Mandeville for a bucket. Mandeville's a load inside there. He's, he's seven feet tall also with 250 pounds. Clearly over the back. No whistle. Letting him go so far. That's fine. If they're going let it, to let it go both ways, I think coaches will be happy about that. There's a push. Andre Patterson called for the loose ball foul with the push off. Patterson last year as a freshman not quite the year they were hoping for. Here's Neil Reed. Had a very strong game last night. Made four threes, scored 19 points, the second top scorer for Knight. Knight pulls Rolls out of the game early on. But Rolls did make the start. Reed started last night. Coach Knight in midseason form, changing mm. his starting lineup the second night out. Well, he will change this lineup throughout the game. And, you know, it's going it's to be interesting to watch how his players come back in and respond. Tony Moore becoming a, a bit of a go-to guy here in his senior year. He scored only three points a game last year. He had 12 last night. Duke up 7-2. to two. 
He played in 19 games last year, so he's getting some on-the-job training here, and Coach K is looking for him to add some experience out there. Evans up over Newton. Good defense by Greg Newton. Chris Collins. Bryce bobbles, but retains. The winner of this game will meet Iowa tomorrow night in our final. Capel gets whack going up. Duke put on a clinic last night against Old Dominion. We, we talked about some of the numbers, but they forced 23 turnovers. They themselves only committed 13, but they also had 12 steals in that game and really just dominated the inside. We always talk about points in the paint. They had 32 points and then giving up Old Dominion only 16. And Old DU is a much bigger team, much more physical team than, than the Blue Devils. But uh, Coach K's back on the sideline. He's already had a dramatic influence. And they are out quickly tonight. Nine to two. Shashevsky's team leads. He missed the last 19 games last year. They lost 15 of those 19. And a turnover for Indiana. Tough entry pass by Patterson into Evans. Coach Knight's going back to the bench again. Indiana starting slowly. One for four from the floor. And they've been a bit sloppy with their passing. Lou Moore's going to come into the game in a moment. It's very tough when players come out of the game from making a mistake. And the coach is giving them instructions and if they if they understand the instructions that's fine but if they continue to look over their shoulder every time they make one error and have to come out they start getting a little afraid after a while and coach Knight's players last night really looked afraid when they came out of the game they were not playing well shot clock at 20 for Ricky Price goes to Collins in the baseline Collins trying to bounce back. He makes a two there. He had a very poor shooting here last year. Shot just 30% from the floor. Foul on Newton against Patterson inside. That's a good point you make. Chris Collins, one of the co-captains of the Blue Duke Blue Devils, and he has to step up his game. He has to look to score a little bit. He had the ankle injury, broke a bone in his right foot. First day of practice last year, had surgery. People say he rushed back a little bit, but uh, now that he's back this season, had the entire summer to work on his game. See if Chris is able to contribute and be the positive leader that uh, Coach K needs him to be as a senior. Andre Patterson, tremendous high school player out of Abilene, Texas. Had a very good game last night. He is considered to be probably Indiana's second best player behind Evans. For Indiana to have a good year in the Big Ten this year, Derek, he has to really step up his game. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. He made both free throws, a couple of points, timeout on the floor. About five minutes into it, Duke up by seven. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Canon. So advanced, it's simple. Somewhere there you can see Derek Dickey hiking through the snow <laughs> at the Wrangell St. Elias National Park. What a beautiful state Alaska is. There's so many breathtaking views. One of these days we're going to get outside and actually see a little bit of it. We've been boning up on these teams. A great field this year, Derek. Eight teams, uh, great depth at the 95 Great Alaska Shootout. I think a lot of the people, though, have been looking forward to this matchup the most. Oh, they certainly have. This is going to be one of the more tremendous and dramatic matchups of this tournament. We saw a great game preceding this one, Connecticut and Iowa going all the way to overtime, but uh, a lot of people have been looking for this coaching matchup. Mark Krzyzewski's made a player change. Taman Damzalski, freshman center at 6'10", is in wearing number 13. Here goes Carmen Wallace. Tony Moore, good rebound. Poked away by Lou Moore. Wild scramble. Damzalski loses it. Reed nice to pass. Wilkerson. What a play by Reed from his seat. Excellent pass to be able to pick the ball up from his seat and find a teammate. Carmen Wallace wide open for three. Mandeville tips the rebound on the baseline. So Duke will keep the basketball. Neil Reed. Injury plague season a year ago. He had some severe shoulder problems. But he was strong last night on opening night with 19 points. You got to see. You got to help him see. You got to help him see. Woo. 
Who's just trying to work the ball around the perimeter so they can find an inside outside game and there you go. Collins misses this three and a loose ball foul called on Gonzalski. Duke up five. Let's throw it back inside our studios and join Carl Ravage. Hi Greg thank you. You've talked about Iowa and Connecticut. Let's show you how it broke down. In overtime before in overtime Deron Sheffer had a shot here to put Connecticut on top. Instead, he throws up an air ball down the other end. Kenyon Murray, one on one, spin move baseline. That put them up by four. They go on to win by six. They are awaiting the winner of your game. Let's go back to Greg. That was a tremendous game, Carl. So one Big Ten team is in the finals. Indiana will try to make it Big Ten versus Big Ten, but maybe we'll have an ACC team. Wilkerson missing. That hit the top of the backboard, so the ball goes over to Duke. Well, we have to mention this again. You talk about Big Ten team getting to the final of this tournament again. Mm -hmm. Last year, the Minnesota Golden Gophers won it. Two years ago, the Purdue Boilermakers won along with the big dog, Lynn Robinson. Each team with the same percentage, not too good at 3-3-3. Uh, three, three, three. But Duke has taken twice as many shots so far in the game. Well, Duke has been able to get free of the Indiana defense. Indiana's just not quite as quick. They just don't seem to be. Foul on the baseline on Lou Moore for pushing on Greg Newton. Rolls comes back in for Bob Knight to play in the backcourt. And Wilkerson leaves. Wilkerson, who needs to have a good year this year. Sharon Wilkerson played poorly last night, trying to recover from a very severe injury. He's showing a little a little rust right now, and, and that, I think the rust is nothing more than a result of not playing competitively. Rick Price knocks down a three-point goal. He has five points. Indiana's not playing a whole lot better than they did last night against uh, Alaska Anchorage. And they are down eight points in the game's first seven minutes. Well, if they're not careful, they're going to be blown out of this game because the Duke Blue Devils are playing excellent basketball for Coach K. Mandeville. Carmen Wallace, a tough rebound, stepping in front of Mandeville. Mandeville gets up slowly. Newton up the floor. And he got fouled by Lou Moore again. That's a good decision by Chris Collins. He saw his teammate. He saw, saw his players getting down underneath the basket, and he wasn't sure whether he was going to deliver it or not, or whether, you know, whether he's going to hold on to the ball, but he finds Newton. And Newton's able to catch the ball up in the air. Look at this pass right over the top of two defenders catching the ball underneath. Wait for the defense to go up and then try to get it up in the air. That's a good job to try to get the ball up and get it in offensive position before the defense is set. Well, Greg Newton was just uh, brilliant last night against Old Dominion. A career high hit seven of nine from the floor scoring those 18 points. And Prior to the game, we talked to Coach K yesterday morning. He was very concerned about his inexperienced front line, but they played well last night. Well, they had to play well, and that's what Coach K said. You know, you, you lose a couple of guys. You lose Cherokee Park. You lose uh, Eric Meeks, and, and someone else has to come in and, and step in and do the job. And Greg Newton did a terrific job last night with six rebounds, a couple of block shots in 27 minutes. So that's what Coach K has to look forward to this year, an active center inside. In fact, all three of the starting front court members in double figures last night Price Moore and Newton Indiana needs that one from Neil Reed and they get it a big three-point goal Duke's lead is trimmed to 15 to 9. Neil Reed's a player who uh, is his dad is an assistant coach at Iowa State so he's done a lot of practicing on his fundamentals. Nice pass by Domzowski Newton had it blocked ball tipped out Duke will keep the basketball. Domzowski made an excellent pass inside traffic trying to make that bounce down there. Shot clock at 22. Capel wide open. Good rebound by Lou Moore. He let everybody in the building know he had that, didn't he? Well, Brian Evans has been especially quiet so far in this game, Derek, and we're eight minutes into it. Well, Brian, he's another player, just like a Chris Kingsbury. He, he is a scorer that you know it's just a matter of time before he finds his way into the offense. Here goes Capel. They're going to call a block That's and a give him the basket. Ball. Good call. Nice, strong, aggressive move. Exploding to the hole is Jeff Capel. Oh, 
This is a nice outlet pass by Collins, and Jeff Capel's going to go right to the basket. He's not going to hesitate at all because he, being a coach's son, knows that if you're aggressive on the offensive end, his mom and dad are up there. If he knows on the offensive end, if he's aggressive going to the basket, the official is going to give the offensive player that call. They're all up there. His dad, Jeff the second, his mom Jerry in the middle, and his brother Jason, just 15 years of age and a pretty good <laughs> basketball player himself. Six feet seven inches, uh, as a point guard, we we're told, that uh, has a chance to go anywhere in the country. Capel with a three point play. Coach K has doubled Bob Knight so far. We're about eight minutes into this one. Let's face it, people. Hey, Hardaway is the best player the in the NBA. And it's going to be very clear that hey, Orlando is. Hey, Bennett, is this couch real leather? Because it's sticking to my leg. We'll be right back. Who's the man? Whoa, whoa. With the <laughs> serious moves. Who's the man? The new Air Penny from Nike. In national news, Senators King and Christie of New Hampshire were well, I guess Spike Lee wasn't available. <laughs> I know there really is something about being a soldier. It started the moment I got here. The word can't vanished. This was advanced training. This was the training I came in for. My folks are proud of what I've done. I'm proud of who I am. I'm a soldier. At True Value, we've got all the decorations and gifts you'll need to get your home ready for the holidays. Anything else that might help? Santa! This Royal Cordless Dust Devil is just $19.88, and this 26 inch toolbox with bonus toolbox is only $14.88. True value. Christmas is just around the corner. Duke trying to make it to the championship game of the Great Alaska Shootout, as Carl Ravitch just showed you a moment ago. Thrilling win by the Iowa Hawkeyes in overtime over UConn, so they're into the championship game. Rolls over to Reed. Indiana needs to get their game going. They need to get the ball into Evans. They do right away. A couple of tips. Lindemann. Todd Lindemann back into the game. Just entering a moment ago. Playing off the bench tonight. Tip that one in. I think uh, Coach Knight said something about Brian Evans. Get yourself open and try to get to the basket. Big right. contact. Price called for the charge. Barreling in to Neil Reed. Tomorrow night right here on ESPN at midnight the Iowa Hawkeyes against the winner of this game in the championship of the 1995 Great Alaska shootout midnight on the East Coast at nine o'clock Pacific time and eight o'clock here in Alaska Patterson he has four points. Well, that's part of being assertive for Brian Evans. He had the ball in his hands and made a skip pass completely across court to Andre Patterson. Moore is doubled, throws it away, stolen by Brian Evans. The defense collapsing in on Moore. Here's Chris Rolls, who did not have a very good game last night. They're expecting this guy to play quite well, a uh, junior college transfer. Lindemann, Patterson back up, blocked by Moore. Patterson stays with it, blocked again by Moore. Patterson needs to dunk that ball. He's standing inside, good body, 6'8", 230. He needs to go up strong to the basket. Lindemann wants to reset against Newton. Newton climbs his back and fouls him. Watch Andre Patterson, a big body, able to get inside out of Abilene, Texas. He can get his position on either side of the board, especially rebounding the ball. But watch number 45 underneath the basket on the right side. He's got good inside position. He's going to try to come up, and he comes up with this ball, misses the shot, and grabs it again. Here is where he should gather himself and take it right back up to the front of the rim with two hands. If anything, he'll get fouled. Tony Moore got him twice inside. There goes Patterson again. Looking for help from Reed in the corner. 
Goes to Lindemann, then back up top to Rolls. Less than 10 minutes to go in the half. Duke leading by five. We have a pushing foul here on the Blue Devils. It's on Chris Collins. Collins got caught on the side that time and failed to move his feet around for the position that he needed to be in. Last night, the Duke Blue Devils, Derek, really played mm -hmm. terrific defense, and that was their biggest problem last year. Good defense again inside, preventing the bucket from Charlie Miller. So last people night, will call a play out. You, you, you talked about last night in Duke. They started off a little, little nervous, but uh, the second half, Coach K said he wanted to come out and pick up that defense, and he said within the first four minutes of the second half against Old Dominion, he wants to force them to take a timeout. They actually took a timeout after two minutes, so defense was working that second half. Jeff Capel with a very smooth pull up on the baseline. He already has 10 points. Good solid player, isn't he? Doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Duke back up seven. Into the baseline, Patterson for three. He made a couple of the threes last night. Jeff Capel plays very much like a coach's son. Indeed he does. He's, he's such a, a poised player when he's out there. Doesn't quite have the body, but doesn't he facially remind you a little bit of Jason Kidd out there? Mm -hmm. You know, player 6'4", six, 6'5", six, able to handle and shoot from the outside. Now he reminds me of Chris Kingsbury from <laughs> Iowa with a long, long three. Coach K said, settle down a little bit, Jeff. Settle down. We're going to see Kingsbury tomorrow night on ESPN of the championship game. Oh, good rebound. Gonzalski. Chris Collins, of course, also a coach's son. His dad coaching the Detroit Pistons, Doug Collins. Rolls the rebound. Getting it into Lindemann. A little hookup. He's foul. Travel or push? Not a push. Not a push. Bob Knight's going to make big changes here. After we see the play by Lindemann, a little rolling hook here. Brian Evans still has to come to the ball a little bit more. I don't think he's getting enough touches out there, especially on the offensive end, because when he's got the ball in his hands, he's such an effective scorer, everybody pays attention to him. Lindemann missing the first, still 20 to 13. Let's check back in. As we look at some of the scores, number one in the nation, Kentucky. Denny Crump with a victory. Look at the last 20 years of college basketball. And Denny Crump, one of only a few guys with two national championships, along with Kay and Dean Smith and Bob Knight, who has three. Timeout on the floor. Duke up by six. Less than eight minutes to play in the first half. Low scoring game early on. These two teams are shooting poorly. This is more like a football score, 20 to 14. Join us tomorrow on ESPN2 for the battle on the gridiron. Wyoming versus Texas El Paso. Marcus Harris of Wyoming leads the whack in receiving with over 120 yards a game. Tomorrow night, 6 o'clock east and 3 o'clock on the West Coast. Boy, those shooting numbers are rough. That's why your scores are so low. You're looking at 29 and 37 percent from the field. Both teams are aggressive defensively, and they always work to have a hand in the face of anyone who's taking a shot or making a pass. Traveling on Demzowski. The ball goes back over to Indiana. It's tough to get free when you have the defenses that are that aggressive. Indiana's gone big. Sharon Wilkerson at 6-4 is the Short, smallest player on the court for the Hoosiers right now. Offensive foul on the guy with a goldie mask. Harris <laughs> Mouye Zinovic. Number 55 for Bob Knight. Mouthful. Mouye Zinovic. I love that name. He uh, really suffered a bad injury in practice. Took an elbow into the chops. He's a good player, though. Got real good skills out of Joliet Junior College. He was a conference player of the year last year at 41 blocks so he's a player who has the ability to, to make some things happen on the defensive end for Bob Knight's team. Good defense by Patterson Derek poking it away. 
And Indiana's playing better defensively, mm -hmm. certainly, than last night, but offensively, they've been very sloppy they're and a struggling. bit slow. Yeah, they're struggling. They, they can't get free. Here's the guy that's going to touch the ball. Yeah. Evans. Yeah. So when he touches the ball, even, even if he doesn't take a shot, the defense reacts because he is such a good scorer. Evans' first two points of the game right there. He had 23 last night. Every time Indiana needed a big basket last night, Evans provided it. There's a steal by Lou Moore. Indiana has it within four. Evans finds Moore. That's a two-point goal missing long. Indiana will keep it, though. Brian Evans, once he brought the ball up the floor, he had two defenders come to him. And that's how the, the kind of respect that he gets when he has the ball in his hands. And if he's able to find an open teammate, they can cash in on an uncontested shot. These two teams have only played twice previously. Indiana, a winner in the NCAA tourney of 87, on their way to a championship. And of course, in 1992, it was Duke in the Final Four with an 81 to 78 victory. Capel with an air ball, rebound to Patterson. Looks like he anticipated contact on that. Wilkerson, blocked by Newton. Mouye Zinovich back inside is fouled. Newton did a nice job to get back and recover on the defensive end and block that shot and keep it in play. But Mouye Zinovich was able to come up with that loose ball. He's got real good hands. Not a good free throw shooter as we saw him shoot an air ball last night, but good hustle to be able to come up with this ball and catch it underneath the basket and try to put it back up as he's fouled. That's big. Three Number fouls three. on Newton. Big. Mouye Zinovich propping up his uh, goldie mask now as he free throws. Whoa! It's a lot of loft on that one. Well, almost an air ball. He's going straight up instead of <laughs> 15 feet toward the front of the rim. He's going 15 up. He's going to pull that mask out. back down, maybe. He air balled one last night. Good recovery. There you go. First point of the game. Get some respect out there. Don't let the guys laugh at you. Ricky Price. Evans playing strong defense tonight. Collins a three-point goal. Mouye Zinovich, look at this tough rebound away from Capel. I thought he was over Capel's back, but no foul was called, but he was able to wrestle that ball away. Traveling violation on Charlie Miller just slightly shuffling his feet. Both teams are turning the ball over there, expecting shot blockers underneath instead of just trying to power the ball straight to the basket. USC with a four-point Win over Lamar tonight, 20 to 17 here, Duke by three. Duke has gone with a smaller lineup, with Lou Moore out there being the, nope, Tony Moore out there, I'm sorry, being the tallest player on the court at six foot seven. Collins lost it. Carmen Waller, shot clock at one. Collins beats the clock and gets the bucket, a three point goal. Good basket by Duke to be able to find that open shot in the corner. They needed that basket to maintain some momentum. Carmen Wallace stayed poised and found Collins. There goes Miller. Diving on the floor, Miller picks it up. Nate Patterson charging on Indiana. Indiana's such a big, strong team. They have to learn how to play with finesse inside. They're, you can't continue to bowl over people. If you're going to power up, you have to power up to the basket. Not going east and west. You can't go into people. You have to go straight up. And if you're going straight up to the basket in this situation, it would have been a good opportunity for Andre Patterson just to jump right over Collins' head. Chris Collins takes his first rest of the game. Well deserved as he was uh, rolling around in the lane with the big boys a moment ago. Indiana has scored just 17 points in the game's first 16 minutes there. Well, there's there's still some some nervousness, I think, in the Hoosiers basketball team and certainly some uh, some loose cobwebs left over from the game last night against Alaska Anchors. They just cannot seem to get loose. Tony Moore with an air ball rebound pulled down by Neil Reed. 
You know, last night we were saying if they play this poorly against Duke, they're going to get blown out. Well, offensively, they are playing as poorly. Well, their, their good defense, fortunately, is good enough to keep them in the game so far, but let's see if they continue to stay in at the second half. Another turnover. Wilkerson throws it away. Neil Reed hurdles the press table trying to retrieve it. The body language of Bob Knight. That says a lot, doesn't it? Bob Knight has been really <laughs> placid tonight. He's just he, last night he was ranting and raving all night, stopping his feet, but tonight he's just laying back. He knows he's got problems. His team not playing well. They're down six late in the first half. Derek Dickey, Greg Papa back in Alaska. Check out Neil Reed making a terrific effort here. Trying to save the ball on the throwaway. Indiana last night beaten by Alaska Anchorage 84 79. Bob Knight said the wrong team won. We deserve to lose. We were out played. We were out hustled. Are they being out hustled again tonight, Terry? Well, so far it seems to be, especially on the offensive end, Indiana's not able to get anything on track. And you know, last night against Alaska Anchorage, you would expect Indiana with their size, with only three players under six foot seven, to dominate Alaska Anchorage. Points in the paint last night, Indiana had 26. Alaska Anchorage, with only two players over six seven, had 36 points in the paint. So they have to do a better job here against Duke. Otherwise, the second half could be a complete disaster. Reaching foul on Neil Reed of Indiana. Carmen Wallace will be on the free throw line for a couple of free throws. What do you make of Coach Knight's sideline demeanor tonight? As we mentioned earlier, I mean, last night he was huffing and puffing and trying to get his team to play a bit better, but he's been really quiet tonight. Well, he certainly is not as animated as, as he is capable of being, but uh, he just wants his players to execute. He's, you know, we, we talked to his sports information director, Greg Elkin, and he said all he wants his guys to do is play hard. There's no secret to the philosophy. Anytime you're on the floor, you don't make mistakes, you don't turn the ball, or otherwise you're coming out of the game. Ryan Evans with a two-pointer, only his second bucket of the game. Indiana still down just six points, so Duke is not taking full advantage of Indiana's poor offensive play. Price. It's a good shot because it went in. It wasn't a good shot because Duke did not have good offensive rebounding position. He shot it early. You don't normally see Duke shoot it in the half court without a couple of passes at least. Strong effort by Brian Evans. He had three defenders around him before he put that ball on the floor. Evans now with six points. Ball tipped, but re regained by Collins. Steve Wojciechowski is now in the game for Duke. He wears number 12. He has replaced Capel at point guard. Here's Collins. This is Collins last year with the Blue Devils. Wallace scores. Good luck by Collins. That's good dribble penetration by Collins to go all the way inside to the baseline and take a couple of defenders and then make that nice wraparound pass. Blue Devils back up by eight points. Evans makes the three way out there, and he was knocked to the deck. He wanted the free throw for a four-point play. <laughs> he sure did, but good things happen when the your best player has the ball in his hands, and Brian Evans is starting to warm up. He had two points uh, just a couple of moments ago, but he has scored Indiana's last seven traveling violation on Price. Ball goes back to IU. Lindemann and Mandeville will both come in. Oye Zinovich and Eggers are pulled out. So Knight goes to uh, two of his three centers to play simultaneously along with Evans in a big front line. Georgia Husky with the pressure. We have a double dribble. He lost it all by himself. The ball was not tipped away. Just 95 seconds to go on this half. Duke by five. They have led throughout. Capel a three-pointer back into wow. the game. He was a couple of steps behind the three-point arc, but that's a good shot for Jeff Capel. He has excellent range. Didn't take him long to rewarm. Duke is slowly inching away from the Hoosiers. Wilkerson somehow avoids the traveling violation. Duke's perimeter defense very good tonight. Look at Wojciechowski all over Reed. Getting more aggressive. Wilkerson, a quiet night so far. Carmen Wallace, good defense. Put back in, though, by Lindemann. You know, a seven-footer in there. There's no way you should be able to stop him when he gets the ball in his hands four or five feet from the basket. 
What do you make of Knight going to the two centers simultaneously? With the, uh, twin, twin tower towers. situation. Nope. Okay. Not helping there. No, it does not help at all, especially when they're back on their heels. Duke is so much smaller, and they're still quicker to the offensive glass. Three shot attempts. Carmen Wallace, one of the more athletic Devils. He has six. Here's a steal by Collins. Wilkerson just not having a very good early year. Good hustle. 22nd timeout. The Duke Blue Devils have stretched it out to a 10-point lead. Bob Knight is searching for answers. Coming up at halftime, the Delta Fawcett halftime report with Carl Ravitch. We'll show you our thriller in the first game here in Alaska. Iowa Yukon going to overtime. Also, Denny Crum was really challenged tonight and also all of the NBA and NHL scores and highlights. Coach Knight is getting a little more animated. Is that what you were looking for? Over there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> As his players came to the sideline, especially the two seven footers, he's saying, guys, come on. There's there's no way you should be out rebounding yeah. or out hustle. But I think the way he's coaching it, he's almost saying, hey, if you guys aren't going to play hard tonight, I'm not going to coach it hard. I'm just going to sit back and watch the game. Well, I bet we'll see some of the players down at the end of the bench start coming in if they don't start playing harder. There goes Lindemann. Five seconds to go. Capel back out to Collins for a long three. There's the first half. Indiana did not play well whatsoever. Mike Krzyzewski's team struggled at times offensively, but their defense was very good at halftime. 36-28, the Blue Devils lead the Hoosiers. Let's check back inside our studios with Carl Ravitch. Hi, Craig. Thanks very much. And what a different feel in that game compared to the two previous games we saw on ESPN. Coming up on the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report, we will review those games. The tip-off classics featuring number one Kentucky trying not to get knocked off. And the other, NIT, semifinal. Stay with us. ESPN's presentation of NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Magnavox. At Magnavox, we make technology people want. Magnavox, smart, very smart. There is no blood. Early season game of the year, the Great Alaska Shootout. UConn and Iowa, two top ten teams that can both light it up and also tighten it up on defense in this close throughout. Jess Settles there to finish, and Iowa happy to see him playing well. They're up 15 at the break. Jim Calhoun says, let's get back into it. Let's get the ball to our star. Ray Allen down the other end, an easy two. A 17-6 UConn run pulls him right back in it. Three minutes to go. Allen, 4-3. 18 of his 22 come in the second half. Eight seconds to go. UConn by two. Andre Woolridge drives, misses. Kenyon Murray is there for the putback, and it goes. We're tied at 86. UConn's last chance in regulation. Ray Allen off the window, off the iron, and out. We head to overtime. In overtime, Chris Kingsbury from three, five of 11 from deep. Iowa by one. Kenyon Murray then seals it, drives baseline. Iowa wins it 101 95. Kingsbury had 30 points in the game. Shepard 23. Ray Allen had 22 for UConn in a loss. Arizona, Georgetown, NIT Finals. Patrick Ewing there to watch his old Hoyas. And you probably wouldn't mind having a guy like Allen Iverson drive and feed, but Jerome Williams slam the follow. Bad news for Arizona. Michael Dickerson comes down hard, twists his ankle real bad, had to leave the game, never return. Wildcats blow the game open. Joe McClain, one, two, three. And then Reggie Geary behind the back to Joseph Blair, who is playing big down low. Wildcats by 17. Here come the Hoyas because here comes Iverson. Look at the lead. Hoyas trail by six at the break. Second half, they stay close. Jafiti White, Heidi White, rebound and dunk. Arizona tries to pull away late. Geary misses. Ben Davis, an inside game. Off the window, dominated by the Wildcats. They win going away. 91 to 81. Iverson had 40 points. That's a career high. Blair, 17 points, nine boards. Ben Davis matches it with 17 of his own. Great game in the San Juan shootout. Louisville and American. That was Carlos Baerga there. He's there to help tip it off. Loose ball. Americans Miguel de Villa to lay in at the buzzer. American up by seven at the half. This American of Puerto Rico. And then Joe Curbeo. 
the hoop. It goes. American by two. Alvin Sims, Duan Wheat, Louisville by five, playing without four of their starters. Mork for Mayo, the three. He had 47 points, most ever against Louisville by any one player. Louisville only up one. And then Duan Wheat for three. It goes. 90-86, Louisville. That is your final score. They did play without Sumaki Walker. We had 20 for Bayo. Remember, 47 points. He took 37 shots. Maryland and Kentucky. Maryland outplayed Kentucky early on. Mark Pope blocked by X3. Hip, get it out of here. Keith Booth goes the other way. Mario Lucas is there for the follow. Maryland by four. And the Terps up their lead to nine. Dwayne Simpkins, hope for the alley oop. And this is an alley oop because it's called an offensive foul. Here come the Wildcats. This game, a game of runs. Derek Anderson, Mark Pope, 28 15 run. Kentucky up two at the break. Wildcats control the second half. Anderson, Pope again inside, hooping it goes. And then the freshman sensation. Tough to miss these shots. Ron Mercer alone for the jam. Kentucky wins it. 96 84, not as close to the score indicated, although a nice run by Maryland in the second half. Rhodes with 30 points in a losing effort. Five boards. Pope, the MVP, 26 points and six boards. Other scores to tell you about Georgia Tech over Michigan. Taylor, 18 points. Trailer, 13 in the loss. Virginia, 84. Tennessee Martin, 65. Staples had 17. Michael Hart, 14 for Tennessee Martin. Stanford over Stetson, 92 to 60. Keith Blackshear, Kerry Blackshear, 31 for Stetson. Revan Knight, Tim Young, 20 and 18 respectively for Stanford. Well, Kentucky trying to win that national basketball title. Nebraska on the gridiron trying to win their second consecutive national title. Trying for their third consecutive unbeaten regular season. Tommy Frazier, a win, gets him to the Fiesta Bowl. James Allen for Oklahoma fumbles it. Tony Veland picks up the loose ball. 57 yards later, he crosses the goal line for the touchdown. Two touchdowns for the Nebraska D on a day where the offense did not generate much. Fourth quarter up 23 zip. Tommy Frazier. 12 of 25 on the day. This one good for 38 yards. Unheisman like. 128 yards and an interception for Frazier. Nebraska does win, though. Third consecutive perfect regular season at 11 0. They are going to the Fiesta Bowl, though. The invitation will not officially come out until December 3rd. When we come back, we will take a look at the man behind me, Michael Jordan. The Bulls offer their best start in franchise history. And guess why? Stay with us. This halftime report is presented by Delta Faucet and your dependable Delta plumbing professional. Together, they're the way water is brought to life. Isn't it just like Delta? Let's make it really cool. To design a faucet that's at both the height of style. Wow. Awesome. And practicality. Delta, the way water is brought to life. Hey, sports fans. Hitachi Ultravision destroys the myth that there's nothing like the real thing. So get real with Hitachi and let the games begin. Hello, movie mavens. With its ultra-clear, ultra-bright, ultra-sharp picture, Hitachi Ultravision asks, who's real? To anyone who's ever guessed who done it. I just love surprise endings, don't you? Ultravision Home Theater, TVs, VCRs, camcorders, only from Hitachi. They created their microprocessor in 1971, and the faster their chips have performed, the faster their company has grown. Today, the Intel design is the brains behind two-thirds of the world's PCs. By the 21st century, Intel expects their chip to execute 2 billion instructions in one second. Where do you find such fast-thinking companies? Actually, there's a list of them printed every day. NASDAQ, the stock market for the next 100 years. Hey, Santa, just a few weeks to go. This Christmas at Sears, things are really shaping up with Sears Cardio Force. Finally, a total body workout for the whole family at the lean price of only $169.99. Hey, I know big, and the Ace Really Big sale is gigantic. It's a huge opportunity to find big name products like this, and this, at really small prices. So hurry down to Ace, it just doesn't get any bigger than this. 
Back in the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report, the Blue Devils by four over the Hoosiers. We continue with the NBA. Bulls, Jazz, Stockton drives. He gets it to go. Jazz already with 10 wins. Bulls try to win their 10th. Michael Jordan around. Hornacek for the bucket. Bulls by three. And then Steve Kerr takes one away from Stockton. Jordan's ahead of the field. A little showtime here. And Michael and the Bulls win their 10th. 10 and 1, best start in franchise history. Elsewhere, the Magic over the T-Wolves, 109-98 in that game. Nick Anderson at 34, Penny had 22. Spurs and Sonics in a good one. Seattle wins, Peyton does play. Kings and Lakers now tied, 95-95. That one is in quarter number four. Philadelphia and Detroit, 101-78. Pistons are winners. Stackhouse had 20 in a loss. Hill had 20 and 10 in the win. Cavaliers over the Pacers, 193. Cleveland has now won three games this season. Miami and Washington, 110-94. Robert Pack had 21 for the Bullets. Zoe Morning, 24 and 8 boards. Hornets over the Grizzlies, 116-104. Larry Johnson, Glenn Rice, each with 20 points for Charlotte. Mavericks and the Nuggets in a good one. End of third quarter. Check this play out. Popeye Jones, Lorenzo Williams. Pretty pass over his shoulder. Lucius Harris, 77-76 Nuggets. Jason Kidd steals it on the inbounds all the way for the jam. We go to overtime. In overtime, Mahmoud abdul Raouf. He hit eight three-pointers on the night. 39 points. Nuggets win 112-109. The final score there. Mashburn had 37. Celtics at home lose to the Warriors 101-94. New Jersey and Portland give the Blazers a win. Armand Gilliam had 20 and 18 in a loss. NHL score. Philadelphia over Detroit 4-1. Lindros had a couple of goals. The Bruins earlier in the day beat the Kings 2-1. Chicago 5. Anaheim 4. Anaheim had 26 shots. Chicago 45. Islanders and Sabres 1-1. Overtime couldn't decide it. Tampa Bay beat Washington 2-1. Burr and Iserbark getting the goals. Iserbark is 8. Hartford over Toronto 4. Zip Chase, Emerson, Sanderson and Castles the goal scorers. Edmonton over Calgary 5-2. That's the final. And don't forget Sports Center will have highlights of all these games. Plus, the college football story. North Carolina over NC State, 30-28. The Battle of Arizona goes the way of Arizona. They beat ASU 31-28. College football tomorrow. Penn State, Michigan State, 3:30. Syracuse, Miami, 7:30 Eastern. Don't forget college game day, 11 a.m. Eastern. In business. In the Great Alaska Shootout, the final. Iowa is already in thanks to Kingsbury Settles and Company. They will face the winner of Indiana and Duke, the game you are watching right now. Chris Collins on D, taking a charge and getting all fired up. Only Bobby Knight could show some of that emotion. Duke right now by four, back to the second half after this. Over the past three years, Dodge has offered a choice of more new nameplates than anybody else. Here are three more new choices, but they aren't cars. They are three choices that make it easier for you to drive a new Dodge. Choose from generous cash incentives or exceptional interest rates or extremely low lease rates. The Dodge Buyer's Choice Sale. Why would you choose to buy any place else? Relax, kick back, rest easy. Not the first thoughts that come to mind when investing on your own. Working with a Dean Witter broker, you'll feel differently. Every client's ambition should be our ambition. Their dreams, our dreams. Because after all, it's reassuring to know someone is there looking out for your interests. Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. your jeans. Mine were dirty. If you don't have them, you can't wear them. We've painted the morning sun in Santa Barbara that burns away those blue-gray mists that cool the coastal vines and brighten all the colors in the grapes that go to make a brighter shade of Chardonnay. Meridian Chardonnay, raised in California sunlight. Aged in French oak, this is the art of Meridian. The bright, rich flavors in every glass of Meridian Chardonnay. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by the new Dodge. We're thinking ahead.
Welcome back to Anchorage, Alaska. Halftime, round two action. Duke Blue Devils have led the entire way tonight by as many as 10 and by eight as we get set to begin the second half. Greg Prophet, Derek Dickey. Boy, Indiana struggled in that first half. They didn't shoot it. They turned it over. Let me score 28 points in 20 minutes of play there. It's pretty ugly, but uh, they had 11 turnovers in that game, and they need to get back on track on the offensive and try to get the ball inside of the big people. When Brian Evans has the ball in his hands, good things happen for the Hoosiers. Let's take a look at some of the numbers from the first half. Duke did not take full advantage. They did not shoot it real well either. Duke made a couple of more threes and two more free throws, and that's why they have the eight-point lead. Jeff Capel led them in scoring with 13. Brian Evans had nine in the first half. They only had two until late in the half, and then he spurted uh, with seven straight points. Inside to Patterson right away to begin the second half. Mandeville misses the tip. Rebound to Newton of the Duke Blue Devils. Well, Indiana did what they wanted to do and get the ball inside. They just couldn't finish the play, could not execute it. Capel, another three-pointer. This one rims out. Loose ball foul, late possibly whistle. on Newton, and that'll be number four. Number four, but that was an awfully late whistle. He had already come back down on the floor, and the play was appeared to be going back down the court. Mm. He's got to come out. Newton only played 10 minutes in the first half. He plays just 25 seconds in the second, and he picks up his fourth here, Derek. Well, this is a good call on, on Greg Newton. There's a push right there over the back, but the fact remains, it, it appeared to be a late whistle. Tony Moore with a terrific block again on Mandeville. Andre Patterson. Let's see if the Hoosiers are able to turn it up a little bit more. Evans got that over the reach of Moore. Good oh, off. He has 11 points. Evans is moving without the ball, and his teammates are now looking for him, and I'm sure that's what Coach Knight told him at halftime. Brian, I want you to get the ball. Whether you shoot it, whether you score or not, keep moving. You almost have to become a John Havlicek mm. type of a player and just move and be active out there. Domzowski oh. knocks in the hook. He just came in a moment ago when Newton picked up his fourth. His first two points of the game. That's a tough shot by Taman Domzowski. He's just a freshman. Patterson not able to shake Moore. Traveling violation Another on Rose. Turnover. Boy, Moore is playing terrific defense for oh, Duke. Yes, he is. He's doing a good job of just good position out there on the floor. Now Duke has to capitalize, as you mentioned ago. They didn't take advantage of opportunities in that first half. They have to now start scoring points off of turnovers. It is incredible the impact Mike Krzyzewski has on his team. When he went down last year in early January, they fell completely apart. Their defense just stopped. Domzowski, Mandeville rolling around. We got a jump ball, possession arrow. What? To Duke. <laughs> the ball was on the floor for a couple of minutes with players rolling around. I see Brian Evans standing up, holding his head. I see another player. Mandeville's still down. Oh, he's still down. He's a little shaken right now. This was uh, some rough action down there on the floor. The ball's going to be tipped around a couple of times. And mm. look at that grab. There's a grab by Mandeville over the back. That's an obvious foul, and no whistle was called. But the officials call a jump ball, and looks like Duke's going to get the possession. He should get two points for the takedown. <laughs> Collins up top to Capel. Or a job with WWF. <laughs> Price does not get the roll. Chris Rolls, junior college transfer, playing his first year with the Indiana Hoosiers. Got it to Reed, but he had to work. Brian Evans, three-point goal. Patterson, the offensive rebound. Good work by the Hoosiers, getting after the ball on the board. Demzowski is called for the foul on Evans. Did not quite get there quickly enough. Demzowski was about a half a step late, but Evans is coming off screens. He's coming around, moving without the ball, and he's squaring his shoulders up, looking to get in shooting position. Wilkerson is going to go into the game right now. Wilkerson did not play well last night. He did not play well 
in the first half tonight. You really have to feel as though he's still physically feeling his way. I'm sure he is. And last night he, he was in the game and he sat down for quite a while and tried to come back. He's got a thigh bruise. He got knee in the in the upper right thigh and also recovering from the broken leg that he had on his left leg. So he's kind of hobbled a little bit. But when you come out here and have to sit, there's ice underneath this floor. So it takes him a little while to get back into the flow as well as the inactivity from not playing last year. Certainly a combination of both injuries. Sure. But he was on crutches on Tuesday on the flight from mm -hmm. Bloomington here. Traveling violation inside. Ball goes back to Duke. But if Sharon Wilkerson is able to play and play well this year for the Hoosiers, they have a chance to be a very good basketball team. Wilkerson comes back in and he gives it right back on the turnover. Here's Price. Another Traveling turnover. violation. Turnovers. That's why we have such a sloppy game out here. Very low scoring. Just 38 32. We're about three minutes into the second half. We have blood on the elbow of one of the players. It's Richard Mandeville. Mandeville. Yep. He's going to have to leave the game or get that closed quickly. Well, he'll and have he... to go out for one tick of the clock. He will get some attention. Todd Lindemann will come in. Lindemann not starting tonight. He's playing off the bench. Be with us on Tuesday night from the Palace of Auburn Hills for the first night of uh, the DirecTV Great Eight. Check out our lineup. Arkansas, Michigan State, followed by Kentucky and UMass. Then on Wednesday, another doubleheader. Wake Forest, Tim Duncan, maybe the best player in the country against Oklahoma State. And it's number 17 versus number two. Virginia and Kansas next Tuesday and Wednesday on ESPN. Who says we have to wait for the NIT or the NCAA tournament? We got great basketball up front. Damzowski likes it. Yes, what a nice pass by Collins. A great pass by Collins to continue to try to get inside. And if he's aggressive like that, Duke's going to be an awfully good team because his young teammates are waiting for him to move. Patterson for three. He made a couple last night. Andre Patterson, only a second. Bucket of the game. He has seven points in total with a couple of free throws. 40-35. Indiana not playing well, but still in this game. Capel. Rebound Demzowski. Poked away and taken away by Reed. Hey, the officials are letting these guys play out here. They're not calling the over the backs or the pushing fouls, and they're being pretty consistent on both ends. Tipped in by Reed. Does that favor one team over the other? Not really. I, I, I think Indiana, everybody's going to say automatically they're mm -hmm. a Big Ten type team right. because they're bigger and stronger and they'll be able to push inside with the bigger bodies. But so far, Duke has been able to contend with that if they can only get Greg Newton back in to contribute. Oh, nice play by Collins again. Going back door to Price and Price gets fouled. Chris Collins really moving the ball around well. They call Capel. The point guard, but that's really kind of a misnomer. It is. Timeout on the floor. Four minutes into the second half. Duke's lead, once 10, now down to only three points. But Collins is dealing tonight. When plumbers hit the road, they carry more than a truckload of faucets and pipes. They carry knowledge about products, like why the finishes and solid brass construction of Delta faucets are right for you. They carry knowledge about styles and knowledge about procedures and codes that tell you they're as committed to perfection as we at Delta are. In fact, there's only one thing as dependable as Delta faucets, and that's the plumber who installs them. Delta, the way water is brought to life. The family of the future will have many hundreds of television channels. Gee, mister, won't that be confusing? Not with this, a video guide. It'll let them see what's on seven days into the future. Or what's on right now. It'll give them instant news and sports scores. And with just one touch, they'll even be able to tape record their favorite television shows. Don't forget the tape. So what do you think they'd call this video guide? Video guide. It's about time. Over the past three years, Dodge has offered a choice of more new nameplates than anybody else. Here are three more new choices that make it easier for you to drive an incredibly sophisticated 96 Dodge Stratus. Choose $500 cash savings, or an interest rate as low as 1.9%, or choose a Stratus lease rate of only $229 per month. The Dodge Buyer's Choice Sale. The choice is all yours at the friendly Dodge dealer near you. 
Rick Papa, Derek Dickey back in Alaska. Duke only up three now over Indiana. Third meeting between Krzyzewski and Duke. And whenever they have met, the winner has eventually gone on and won the national championship. Bob Knight with the uh, Keith Smart jumper in 87 over Syracuse and in 92. The back end of Coach K's back to back. Well, if I'm these two coaches, I might want to play a little more often. Yeah. Price knocks down a three. Ricky Price, his second three of the game. He has 10 points, 43 to 37. Duke back up by six. It's becoming a regular event to have bodies on the floor each time these teams are coming down in the half court set. Holding foul. Patterson draws it. It's on Carmen Wallace. Two of the great winners in the college game. Bob Knight has won three national championships in the last 20 years. Coach K winning two back to back. In fact, uh, Derek, when you look at the, the post wooden era, offensive foul on Indiana. Ball goes back over to Duke. Since John Wooden won his last championship in 75, Bob Knight has won the most championships of anybody three coach K has two Denny Crum has two and also Dean Smith mm. has two just those four multiple winners well, I think they're both in uh, what we, we would call rebuilding or reloading years right now with all the young talent they have out there so I don't think it's going to happen this season that we'll see either one in the, in the finals but they certainly both have a chance to get to the final four Jeff Capo more than capable from outside. He can really shoot the threes. He has 16 points tonight. He is such a skilled athlete and being 6'5", he can, he can not only shoot the ball from the outside, but he can put it on the floor and lead the offense. Very important basket by Lindemann. He has nine. 46-39. The offenses for both clubs getting a bit better here in the second half. Well, if they can take care of the ball and stop turning it over, I think either one can get inside and score whenever they want to. But Price can get up there. Capel inside keeping that ball up. Taken by Patterson. Indiana has a breakout. Price just getting up. Reed. Oh, Wallace. Beautiful play. Collins poked away and Reed dives on the floor. Second nice time he's done that tonight. <laughs> Got his pocket picked. Charlie Miller to Brian Evans. No Wanted foul. The contact. That was a pro move. Get him in the air. Oh yeah, that get was into nice. the armpit. That was nice. He should have gotten a continuation and a foul on that one. Evans has 15 points. They only had two late in the first half. Collins, the drawing kick. Oh, Bryce rails another three. His yeah. third of the game. Coach K always talks about, guys, we need dribble penetration. We need somebody to dribble the ball inside the lane, take the defense, and pitch it out for that open shot. That's textbook. I don't think Bob Knight liked that last pass by Neil Reed. There's a chance. <laughs> I think Reed was coming out of the game anyway, but he's definitely out of the game now after throwing it off the uh, basket stanchion. Always teaching, always coaching over on the sideline. Sometimes the players don't want to always hear what he's got to say, but he's always trying listen. to give them some encouragement and instructions. Wojciechowski back in for Coach K. Showing ice water in his veins. Gonzalski hitting one out there. He's normally an inside guy. He has six points, Taman. And Duke has reclaimed a 10 point lead, matching their largest. Lou Moore is back in. Here's Wilkerson having a very quiet tournament so far. Patterson for three. Rebound to Wojciechowski. Head up. He finds Capel. Indiana needs to score here. Yes, they do. They need to slow down the momentum of Duke, but they have to get the ball inside. I'd say get it inside. Certainly try to find Brian Evans if you can, but Jeff Capel is blanketing him right now. 
He's all over him. Even without Newton tonight, in foul trouble throughout, Duke's defense has been superb inside. It's been consistent. It's been very, very steady. No foul. Now Evans gets the call. It's on Capel. Capel's first. Price comes back in after just a brief rest. Capel leaves. See who Coach K is going to put on Brian Evans now that Capel's going out of the game. Indiana's going bigger again. Or big. Also, Carmen Wallace leaves. Tony Moore back into the game, and he would be the likely choice. Greg Newton has been shackled to that bench all night long, picking up his fourth foul early in the second half. We likely will not see him until probably another uh, five or six minutes at least. Brian Evans, the leading returning scorer in the Big Ten Conference, has 17 points with those two free throws. Last year, averaged better than 17 a game. He will go out for a rest. I don't know if Coach K can afford to do without uh, Greg Newton, but he's, he's certainly doing it so far. And Greg Newton had a terrific game last night. We mentioned in the first half, 18 points and six rebounds. Chris Collins with the miss. Wilkerson. Miller trying to get it in. Ball kicked out by Demzowski. They will reset the 35. And they will inbound the ball when we come back. Timeout on the floor. 11.34 to go. Duke still leading Indiana by eight. Great names in college basketball have been victorious at, uh, victorious at the great Alaska shootout. Who will it be in 1995? We will... Find out more tomorrow night when we bring you the championship game of the tournament. Iowa, they will be there. The winner of this game will be their opponent. Iowa beating UConn in overtime, 101 to 95 tonight. UConn played very poorly in the first half, Derek, but played a nice second half, but in overtime, too much Kingsbury. Oh, yeah. The Kingsbury had a terrific second half, winding up with 30 points in the game, 27 of those points in the second half. And He's a player that uh, is going to make an awful lot of impact on the, on the uh, Hawk, Hawkeyes this season. Uye Zinovich, the masked man, going up with the hook inside. Rebound pulled by Demzalski. Looks scary out there, doesn't he? He's got some sharp elbows, too. He knows how to use his body. Collins knocked down, gets up on the baseline. Collins has the ball now. Watched by Lou Moore tightly. Plenty of time on the clock. Ten seconds to shoot now. Collins will go in. That's a charge. No basket. That is hard. He looks just like his believe. father. <laughs> That's Doug Collins right there. <laughs> That was a smart play by Chris Collins to go in and try to draw that foul, but Uye Zinovich was standing right there, and, and it was definitely contact initiated by Collins, but uh, my goodness, you're looking at a guy in Chris Collins who's only 180 pounds wet, knocking down a guy who's over 250 pounds. Uye Zinovich inside. Good move. Good, strong move over the shoulder. Was that not... Doug Collins, exactly. You know, when Joe Dumars used to beat his Bulls in the finals, you could just see him running down the sideline like that. Well, I played against Doug, so I, I remember him well. You guys came into the league the same time, 1974. Yeah, we came in huh? Just about, uh, Doug came in 74. I came in 73, yeah. yeah. Evans picks up the foul, his second of the game. Price will be on the free throw line. Ricky Price. One thing uh, Coach K was concerned about before the year, the depth on the wing and putting pressure on the ball from the wing. And he said, you know, we got Ricky Price, we got Carmen Wallace, but that is going to be an area where I don't know if we can defend people like we used to, but just in these first two games so far, Wallace and Price have done a nice job putting pressure on the wings. Well, it's, it's good experience, and we did mention this last night that they had a chance to practice six times before the, the first game last night, so he, he felt like they had some good chemistry coming into this game. The players really got a chance to, 
to know each other. There's very few distractions up here in Alaska, so they got to work on some fundamentals with their offense. Wilkerson just can't get going tonight. Lou Moore is going to get an offensive foul. Loose ball foul climbing a back, I believe. Or is I it on Duke? I believe you're right. Yeah, it's going to be on Lou Moore. Yep. Lou was uh, clearly out of position, came jumping in late, so he gets the violation. Ian Patterson playing up front with Muye Zinovich. Ten minutes to play. Brian Evans needs to get a touch. Hasn't had the ball in his hands in the offensive set where he likes to get it. Duke going to a three guard rotation here. Wojciechowski, Collins, and Capel. Here's Capel. Another three pointer by Jeff wow. Capel. He has Jeff 16 Capel. points. He's made four threes. He's starting to warm up, isn't he? He's telling his teammates just back off, back off. I got him. Rock him back a little bit. Pull up for the jumper. Good pass over the top. Brian Evans to Andre Patterson. And no way Patterson can be stopped inside as athletic as he is. People keep saying he should be the successor to Allen Henderson inside for the Hoosiers. Duke offensively, a lot of touches. Everybody gets a, a feel of that basketball. And Coach K told us after the game last night that that's one thing he wants to stress for his players. He said, when you get guys out there who are working hard on offense and defense, and then they're trying, they're not getting a chance to touch the ball, it really takes a little bit away from you. But if you pass it around, let everybody feel it or touch it, then it makes you a little bit more inspired. You now want to play a little bit harder. Andre Patterson, he touched the ball, he touched the floor, he rolled all over the floor, made a terrific effort play to get it to Wilkerson. And Wilkerson picks up the foul on Wojciechowski. Indiana down nine points, less than nine minutes to play. I think come Big Tim time, uh, Sharon Wilkerson's going to be uh, in in full stride. He is starting to show that he's got some some stamina out there, and he's working pretty hard, and you know showing some explosiveness that he had before the injury. Patterson, Wilkerson tipped it. Collins, it's Duke's ball. Wilkerson jumping over the press table. Great hustle by both teams, but Chris Collins comes up with this advantage. Putting the ball back in Duke's hands. Like he fell out of the wrestling ring and he ducks under the ropes to get back in. Greg Newton comes back in the game with four, four fouls. fouls. Early, two, eight and a half minutes to play. And Duke has uh, brought the big blonde center back in. It's a gamble, but uh, he's got to get out there and play. He's got to play with aggressiveness and, and not be tentative while he's on the floor. Wojciechowski, good luck finding Collins. Three pointer. By Chris Collins. Well, they are doing a masterful job of getting the ball inside, right about free throw line extended, dribbling inside there, and then looking for the pitch out. Evans a three. Muye Zinovich back up. No, but tipped in. Tipped in by Patterson. Indiana can control the boards if they want to, but what they're doing is allowing their defense. They're not rotating quickly enough on defense to cover the Duke shooters from the perimeter. Tony Moore wants to post. Traveling violation. Ball goes back over to Indiana. When we come back, timeout. Seven and a half to play. 59-49, Duke. If you're in the mood for a free lunch with the Triangle's most stunning view, you're in the mood for The Dollhouse of Raleigh. The Dollhouse of Raleigh, home to 75 of the world's most sophisticated entertainers, is now featuring free all-you-can-eat lunch buffets starting at 11.30 a.m. Monday through Friday. It's new, it's hot, and it's free. The free all-you-can-eat lunch buffets now at The Dollhouse of Raleigh, where all your appetites are satisfied. you gain more control of your finances. Quicken also tracks credit cards, loans, investments, budgets, and more, and balances your checkbook in minutes. It even keeps track of your tax deductions. Does that answer your question? So why not try Quicken? It's easy. Call 1-800-453-2405 for your 30-day free trial. Pay just $9.95 shipping. If you decide to keep it, we'll bill you the balance in 30 days. The Human Face. 
a landscape. Difficult terrain where certain hairs grow taller, longer. Introducing a revolutionary three-stage shaving system. Braun Flex Integral. The first foil removes short hairs. An integrated cutter shaves longer hairs. And the second foil completes the job. New Flex Integral. For Braun's closest shave yet. Braun. The world's most recognized shave. Mike Krzyzewski and the Blue Devils. Seven and a half minutes away from... Uh, a date with Iowa tomorrow in the championship of the great Alaska shootout. Look at Duke. Four of 11 in the first half, but they've made five in the second half. Capel has four. Price three. Collins two for Duke. There's your difference in the game. They've made nine threes. Ayu's made three. Yeah, they've come out loaded looking for that perimeter shot, knowing that they can't go inside to Greg Newton, who's been on the bench most of the half with four fouls. Still Indiana's ball. Went off a of more apparently. Shot clock at 20. Neil Reed. Watched by Chris Collins. Patterson's open. Then Newton fired out and took it away. He missed that three. Oh, good pass by Mouye Zinovich. Nice pass. Good movement without the ball by Brian Evans. Evans has 19 points there. Indiana has to continue to go inside, go into their strength. Even if Brian Evans doesn't touch the ball on an exchange when they come down on the offensive set, get the ball inside. That's where their strength is. Need to get to the free throw line. Well, Jahowski getting a lot of minutes in this second half. Here's Newton. He traveled, hassled by the double team. He had contact behind him, and then the defender backed off, and he was still feeling for it, and nobody was there. Newton playing with four fouls, but that was not a factor on that traveling violation. The two defenders were. Here's Reed into Evans. Double. Patterson. Bouye Zinovich is fouled by Collins as he scores. What beautiful passing by Indiana. Well, that's it. That's, that's exactly what they need to do. Get the ball inside to their strength. Brian Evans attracts three defenders. He makes a nice bounce pass down inside. And one more quick touch pass. You've got easy shots all night. Let's see how Harris Bouye Zinovich handles the free throws. He's been having a problem during the tournament. Got it up there. Light off the front rim. Newton the rebound. Collins, quick three. A little too long. Price with the rebound. <laughs> Over the top of his teammate, Jeff Gable. He can stretch out Price. Shot clock at 20. Collins not going to shoot it this time. Long one by Wojciechowski. Very flat. Newton tips it. Can he save it? No. Indiana basketball. Newton could have gotten that fifth foul on that play. Coach K will take out Wojciechowski. Gomzowski comes back into the game. He pulls out a guard to bring in a big guy. Going back with a bigger lineup because he's rec he's recognized also that Indiana is trying to get the ball inside now. You need to defend that. Good block. Foul. They got Collins again a late call. Good block. I thought Collins got all ball on that. <laughs> I love his reaction. He's exactly his father. Oh, he is, isn't he? <laughs> I didn't do it. I that's, didn't do it. That's number four on Chris. <laughs> Neil Reed will be on the free throw line. Collins has to come out here. Wojciechowski's coming back. Uh -huh. Boy, we are really moving along here. <laughs> We've had 12 fouls the whole night combined. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Neither team has been to the free throw line. Well, that's good and bad news for you. Good news is we get dinner <laughs> after the game. Bad news is you're buying. It's your turn. Oh, hey, that's fine. I'm, I'm ready for some crab legs. I don't this know game, about, you. about an hour and a half, right? I know. Lane violation, what they call here. 
Lane violation on Indiana. Free throw wiped away. What happened? Wait a minute. He's he waving the free Indiana throw off. Ball. But he's giving Indiana the ball? Yes. Timeout. They're going to call a timeout time here. Out. Knight wants a timeout. 5.37 to go. Indiana's going to have the basketball, apparently. We'll get a clarification for you when we come back here. Five minutes and 37 seconds to go. The Duke Blue Devils with a five point lead over the Indiana Hoosiers. We'll come back and find out what that call was. Coach K doesn't like it, you know that. Looking forward to another year of Yuletide wrestling? Try swivel straight. Just clamp it, stand it, swivel it straight. Hey Santa, just a few weeks to go. This Christmas at Sears, things are really shaping up with Sears Cardio Force. Finally, a total body workout for the whole family at the lean price of only $169.99. to design a stylish faucet that's practical, too. Give me that. So it's long enough to reach today's double. <laughs> I like And even triple sinks. <laughs> Delta, the way water is brought to life. Need a towel? No, Taking your act on the road? With Connect First from Northwest Airlines, you get treated like a king for the price of coach. You pay a coach, you sit in first class, only on Northwest, baby. <laughs> Here's what happened on that last play. Check out the right side of your screen. Bottom Double. of the lane, 55 red, 13, they're in the lane. Double lane violation on Dumzowski and Mujazinovic. Play Coach was K doesn't off. like it. Jump ball, Indiana gets the position yep. arrow. So Indiana... Now we have a foul before they even throw the ball in. The ball goes back over to Duke. Over. Oh, that's costly. Just when they start to chip away at this lead, it's down to five. Mouye Zinovic picks up the foul trying to set a pick, so the double lane violation does not help Knight. We still have over five and a half minutes to go in this game, and Indiana's starting to make a, a slow run to get back in it, but every time they seem to, they make a mistake. Holding foul. Price draws it. When Price drops that shoulder and gets low like that, you know he's playing with confidence. Oh, he's, he's an athletic player at 6'5". He's able to put the ball on the floor and go left to right. This time he goes baseline side, and three Hoosiers pick him up. But he's still able to hang in the air long enough to be able to draw the foul. Ricky is 6 feet 5 inches tall. He's uh, grown a couple of inches since his senior year at Sarah High School in Carson, California. He's up to 6'5". That's why he handles the ball so well. Mm -hmm. Coach K with a six point lead now. We touched on it early when Bob Knight and Coach K embraced at midcourt. Bob Knight actually gave him a little uh, neck massage. <laughs> of course, they were very tight years ago. Bob coached him at Army, Knight coaching Shashevsky. And for whatever reason, the relationship is not nearly as strong as it once was between the two. Number 55, Greg Newton is just fouled out of the game. The center for the Blue, Duke Blue, Demon, Blue Devils. Now Coach K brought him back in with eight and a half to go, and now he fouls out with 5-11 to play. Take a look at number 55. There's no question that there's some contact there. He's moving as the shot's being taken by Andre Patterson, and that's where the foul is called. Greg Newton, he scored 18 points Point. last night. He only gets one tonight. 
Patterson. Cuts the lead down to 61 to 55. It was actually while Newton was out of the game that Duke made its biggest runs. They extended the league by putting uh, smaller players on the floor, adding to their quickness and forcing some turnovers. Andre Patterson has 13 points. We have a five point game with five minutes and five seconds to go. The winner of this game faces Iowa tomorrow for the championship of the 1995 Great Alaska Shootout. The loser will face UConn in the third place game. That's not going to be an easy one. <laughs> no, it will not. The Huskies realized they had a chance to win that game. They missed some very important free throws down the end, down the stretch. Oh, big steal by Indiana. Here's Brian Evans. Ruye Zinovich missing the tip. Wojciechowski the rebound. <laughs> the biggest little man on the floor at five foot ten. Wojciechowski playing down the stretch for Collins. Chris picked up his fourth foul a couple of minutes ago. There goes Price. A little early maybe for that shot. Maybe just a little bit early. He felt like he had a clear look at it and Coach K will allow his players if they feel like they have a good shot. There is nothing wrong with taking it. Evans the pick from Patterson. Ball tipped away but Patterson recovers. Shot clock at 15 for the Hoosiers. Wilkerson's got to go. Does he know how much time is on the clock? I don't think he does. He does. Missed it. Not what Knight wanted run there. I don't think so. Look at the expression oh. on his face. Priceless. Over there. <laughs> I got one eye on Knight the whole night. Positively fabulous theater, Bob Knight. Last night he was all over the place. Tonight he's just laying back. Timeout. Three minutes and 33 seconds to go. Neither team is playing real well tonight, but one of them is going to get a victory. Yes, another morning, another trip to the office. But in the new Mercedes E-Class, you're in one of the safest cars on the road. You're inside a protective cage with front airbags and, get this, side airbags. Heaven knows there are animals on these roads. My, what big ears you have. All the better to hear you with, my dear. And what big eyes you have. The better to see you with, my dear. Real red, real smooth, red wolf. My, what big teeth you have. What are they for? ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, where safety, reliability, performance, and value are never optional. Long, long way from Bloomington, Indiana. Round trip almost 7,700 miles. <laughs> Last time Bob Knight and the Hoosiers were here, they finished in seventh place in the tournament's first year, 1978. He has three minutes and 33 seconds to make up five points. Or else the best he can do this year would be third place. The winner of this game gets Tom Davis tomorrow night in the championship. Will it be Coach K or will it be Coach Silent K? Don't know if that's a prize, is it? We'll find out tomorrow at, at midnight. Here's Capel for three, way up there. Rebound to Reed. Indiana. Down five. Good look. Muye Zinovich scores. Nice pass by Neil Reed. Trying to cover the ball and unable to get back and cover his man was Tony Moore, and he just did not get any support from his teammates. What a three-point game. Chris Collins is back in. Boy, Coach K is going to a very small group here down the stretch. Going for quickness. And ball handling and free throwing. That means he's got to get at least four or five guys going after ball, balls on the defensive board. 
Collins going to force one up. <laughs> Big shot. <laughs> that is a tough shot. Collins going oh, yeah. to the basket with defense draped all over him. Look at him. He's strutting a little <laughs> going back. 63-58. 2.22 to go. Oh, he threw it behind him. Wojciechowski steals it. He has help. He'll get fouled. What a smart play. I say smart in the respect that Wojciechowski knows that there's a defender coming by and trying to time it so that he can block that shot. And instead of going up on the left side, he takes one extra dribble and goes to the right side so he can at least try to draw the foul. Good hustle to tip the ball out in front of himself. Steve Wojciechowski is going to go up and jump right into Sean Wilkerson. Sharon Wilkerson to draw that foul. Wojciechowski having a big night tonight, Derek. Played a lot in the second half and he's played well. Yes, he has. He's had to be on the floor because Chris Collins has been in foul trouble. Made all four of his free throws last night. There's his first tonight. Bob Knight is going to a smaller group now. He pulled mm. out Oye Zinovich and he brought back into the game Rolls. Pulling out a big man for a guard. He's got Rolls, Miller, Reed, along with Patterson and Evans as two forwards. They got to make up some points here in a hurry down seven. Two minutes to go. Back door, Evans. So it's touched. Could have been goaltending. Yeah, it was so goaltending. <laughs> the bucket goes anyway. <laughs> They missed one there, 21 for Evans. We've not had a lot of free throws combined by both these teams tonight. So Indiana, a lot of stoppage of play. Not real aggressive on this defensive no. stand. No, they're running, they're running out of time here. A minute and a half to go. Well, they don't have to go for, they don't have to foul yet, but they can at least try to go for a steal and then, yeah, force Duke out just a little bit further. Reed there slapped it out. Duke keeps the ball. Good night. Knight doesn't like the call, but I'm not happy. Duke's only going to have four seconds on the 35. When we come back, Coach K stops play with a timeout. Knight thinks that ball was deflected out by a devil after Reed tipped it. He won't get that call. I heard a big hand slap over there. 124 to play. Four seconds to shoot when we come back for Duke. They have the ball and they have a five-point lead. It's a big with two having problems with referees in the NBA. David Robinson, Frank Wachowski get into it. Robinson gets ejected. George Carl and Bob Hill push and shove each other. Highlights on Sports Center a complete story. Back to you, Vince. All right, good stuff. Bob Knight a little hot and feisty himself here in Anchorage, Alaska. He wanted a charging foul on Duke a moment ago, and he really let the referees have it. A good 30 seconds into the timeout, he was still stomping and pointing. Shot clock at four, Derek. They got to get a shot up. They got to get a good look at the basket. They're certainly able to do that, but they have to get it in first. Into more, quick turn. Rebound pulled by Brian Evans. Indiana does not need a three-point attempt here. All they need is a good shot. Shot clock at 15. It would be nice to get it up pretty soon, though. Reed. That's not the shot that Knight wanted. They never could get the ball inside. No, they could not get it inside, and Brian Evans couldn't get free of his defender. He wanted the ball, but he was remaining up around the top of the key instead of running away and then coming back. Neil Reed tried his best to pick up a charge. They'll get the block instead with 42 seconds to go. is doing the right thing. I think Coach K does a tremendous job when he keeps his better ball handlers out there. He's got Capel, he's got Collins, he's got Will Jahowski out there. Guys who understand what it's like to keep the ball in pressure situations. Timeout. Indiana, 42 seconds to go. Duke up five, and they're going to shoot free throws. And we come back to Anchorage. Next is Lady. Exceptional sheen. Oh, very good color. Friends. Hands. Oh, such stateliness, such majesty. Larry. Larry. For the great 
taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. The best of show, Mort. Greg Papa, Derek Dickey back in Anchorage, Alaska. Duke Blue Devils, their first ever trip to the Great Alaska Shootout. 42 seconds away from a championship date tomorrow with Iowa. Neither coach has the ability to give away a foul. Any more fouls, they'll put the opponents on the line. That's what they have as far as the timeouts, the fulls and the 20s. Chris Collins will be on the line. I got shoot a fuck out. With a one and one. Collins makes both these free throws. It's going to make it a three possession game for Indiana. They're going to have to come down and make three different basket attempts. Now, when they come back, do they have to make a three or a two? Well, I'd say they go for a three, but they need to get a good shot, and they need to do it pretty quickly. Knight has 40 seconds to go. He's down seven points. Rolls to Reed. Reed, double. Out to Evans. A three-pointer up. Lindemann back in with 28 seconds to go. Need the foul. They got the ball in the hands of Collins. Doing his curly kneel here. People diving all over him. What a dribbling show. Wojciechowski is fouled by Rolls with 17 seconds to go. Boy, Collins, <laughs> he was going left hand, right hand. He was moving left and right. He went by everybody. He sure did. Never that was an him. excellent dribbling exhibition by Collins to be able to get the ball up the court with people diving at his feet. Wojciechowski is the guy on the line. Duke is up five. Makes the front end of the very important one and one. If Duke wins this game, Shashevsky will take a two game to one lead overnight in their career matchups. Knight won the first time. Coach K won in 92 at the final four. Reed way out there. Air ball. That will do it. Eight seconds to go. I think that is just about enough icing on the cake. Boy, Mike Shashevsky is back, and so are his Blue Devils. Wait a minute, it rolls on a throwaway by Capel. It's a five-point game, and now we have a timeout for Indiana. Bad mistake there. Still a five-point game. Duke has some work to do with six seconds to go. Tomorrow night, midnight, Eastern time, we will bring you the championship game of this great Alaska shootout. And it may be the Big Ten, Derek, versus the ACC. Well, if Duke is able to hang on to this game, uh, five-point lead with six seconds to go, I'd say it looks pretty good if I'm in their court. But uh, Iowa's played very well. They did a masterful job this evening against Connecticut. They had a big lead, 15-point lead in the first half, able to hold on and come back and win in overtime, actually, after UConn came back. But uh, they are very sound basketball team inside so uh, Duke's going to have their hands full. Who do you like tomorrow? Well if, if Duke and, and uh, Iowa do compete I, I think Iowa you know they seem to be the favorite right now because of how well they're playing but uh, Coach K is back so anything can happen when you have some young talent out there. As soon as we're done here in Anchorage we'll get you to Sports Center Larry Beal and Stuart Scott Tell you about number one Kentucky rolling on Nebraska a big win in football and the Chicago Bulls a pretty impressive road trip. That's coming up when we are done here six seconds to go. Duke has the ball and they have a five point lead. Wojciechowski is fouled. With five seconds to go. And Collins, uh, you know, Collins, Chris Collins running into Neil Reed over here in front of us, and Reed trying to draw a foul. Reed plays tough. You have he to is. like Neil Reed. Diving all over the place tonight. Wojciechowski, 19 year old sophomore. Misses. He'll get one more. Seventy sixty four Duke rolls 
Duke does not want to foul here. Reed, a three-pointer at the horn. No good. Mike Krzyzewski is 2-0 and on the young year. He beats Bob Knight tonight in exchange as they go their separate ways for the season. And Coach K will have a meeting coming up tomorrow night right here on ESPN at midnight with Tom Davis and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Our final score from Anchorage, Duke 70, Indiana 64. Sports Center is next for Derek Dickey, our entire ESPN crew. I'm Greg Papa saying good night from Alaska. Should be another W for the Wolfpack. Now, State was impressed. Sure took notice of what transpired up in Anchorage, Alaska over the Thanksgiving holiday. The Duke Blue Devils making the statement, forget last year, we are back. Duke won the Great Alaska Shootout and in the process beat nationally ranked teams Indiana and Iowa. Today, Bob Holiday was in Durham as Duke got ready to practice and has more. They're all smiles today at Cameron Indoor Stadium. On the heels of the worst season in Duke basketball, the Blue Devils have launched one of their best beginnings, winning the Great Alaska Shootout. Our main goal was to go there and win the tournament. Uh, we didn't go out there to, to be a, at Trajan's home in Alaska and just to hang out. We went there to prove what kind of basketball team we can be. The players Alaska. talked at length today about what it means to have Blue Coach Devils. Mike Krzyzewski back on the sidelines. Looking over at him during the game, you see the look in his eyes of, of his confidence that he instills in us. The intensity is higher, the attention to detail is greater, and uh, guys overall have more confidence. Steve Wojciechowski, stung by criticism a year ago, had the confidence to take the big shot against Iowa. After this, Duke never trails again. I took a lot of big shots last year, I just didn't make them. So, I'm just happy this one fell. The preseason polls all snub Duke, and the players admit that motivates them. How high they'll climb remains to be seen, but clearly the feeling at Duke is not like last year. In Durham, Bob Holiday, WRL TV5 Sports. Number 54 with the ball. They're looking around the perimeter, trying to get the ball inside the hides, but Duke is playing excellent defense on him. Good defense there, forcing him to take about a 12-footer. He's not getting inside like he was. No, he's not, and he's losing his position is what he's doing. He's being pushed off balance, and when you take an off-balance shot, unless you have a keen eye, you're not going to make very many of those shots. We've got about seven guys getting ready to check into the game over there at the table. Seven? What is this, hockey? Well, five and five, <laughs> or four and three. I'm going to let you handle the changes. <laughs> Hodge pulls the rebound. There's Mullen. There you go, a little out of control with the dribble, but right to a teammate, and a three is stuck in the corner by Mike Byers. That's his second three of the game. He has eight points early on. They're moving the ball very